Hello Gemini, it's uh, Dadichi here from astrology.com.au. Thanks for joining me again. You know, uh, the saga continues here uh, in your horoscope. We talked last month, for those of you that uh, were here, about the Mars and Saturn opposition, a very, very intense one occurring in the area of finance, your earnings and also the shared resources. And the big event here on July 3rd is this major total solar eclipse again occurring here. And then you're going to have Venus moving into this position as if this solar eclipse isn't enough. And that is very, very telling on a whole new chapter beginning in your life as far as finance, earnings. These are dramatic shifts in energy. And if you've been thinking of some sort of uh, new work or line of work and have a look here with the exceptionally favorable trine aspect this is 120 degree or soft aspect very very nicely supported by the idealistic neptune it's quite likely you are considering making some changes here or have an opportunity to really reappraise how you've been handling money you know the second house is all about self-preservation finance on the fourth there, 4th of July, Independence, maybe that's got something to do with it. Venus, one of your most favorable planets here, um, moving into this same position to bring with it some elegance, some creativity. Again, you've got the sun here, and that's going to continue here till around the 24th. You've got some heavy responsibilities to deal with, though. You know, there's no gain without pain. You have to sacrifice quite a bit sometimes. So depending on what the what the, uh, the vision that you have is um, and the extent of that is going to determine how much sacrifice, how much responsibility. The Sun-Saturn is a very frustrating combination. And then to follow that up with Venus, which rules your fifth house of romance, love affairs, creativity, that also goes through a bit of a roadblock here throughout this period of the, um, around the 13th on because that's when it moves into the orb of Saturn. This also has to do with this, these two lingering planets for you in the 8th house. So it's not only about, well, I guess self-preservation is about earning the best you can for yourself, but having to be mindful of how that impacts other people. The issue of how you negotiate that is shown by these very um, tough, vi some people call it a very vibrant Mercury Mars combination in your third house of communication and that's happening also at the same time as the moon makes its conjunction here to Saturn in this area of intimacy, sexuality, shared financial resources um, and it's a full moon. You have a look here on the opposition of the moon as it moves through this conjunction to Saturn. There it is there on the 17th. 18th the full moon is very very powerful and shows a I guess a, a new perspective on all of this matter I focused a lot this month on the financial stuff in your life a lot of tight aspects here the only thing keeping you going here I guess is this favorable influence from Neptune and that's going to be augmented when albeit a dark moon, because as the moon swings around here, you notice that it's in its dark phase. It's going to make that conjunction, and it's probably around this time, around the 21st, 22nd, that uh, you have to be a little bit careful that your emotions aren't sullied or muddied by the conjunction of this, this Neptune. Better times ahead for you, even though it's a dark moon, as the moon transits this 11th house. This gives some opportunities here with Jupiter retrograde in the 7th, Mercury retrograding back out of this communications house into the finance sector. So, you know, the retrograde period is often a period where you have to reconsider your decisions. That is why the earlier conjunction of Mercury and Mars was probably a little impulsive. Now you've got to go back and think, hang on a sec, did I make the right decision there? Did I sign on the dotted line too early? So I'd be suggesting you wait 
or if you can do it before that retrogression. But generally, the second half of the month here is not going to be great for you to do um, any of that wheeling and dealing, knowing that Mercury's in this position and so sensitively tied in <coughs> with your financial circumstances. Jupiter also is retrograde here. It's not a friendly planet. It shows that partners, people you're doing business with, may in fact decide to renege. So you need to get more qualification on the people you're dealing with. Better times around the 30th, 31st, when the month finishes up with a lovely Venus transiting into this third house to give a better approach to your communication, your dialogues, your thinking, your ideas, travels, and uh, even relationships with siblings. Take a look at astrology.com.au. We always add a little bit more there for you if you want to add to the uh, insights that I hope I've given you here for the month of July. You're welcome to contact me here. Drop me a note. A lot of people are doing that. We are having um, a huge avalanche of people wanting personal readings. And you can understand why. This is more or less a general view of the heavens. And uh, to really put this in perspective, your time, your date, your place of birth, we can juxtapose this to see exactly what's happening in your life at this time and all those subtle nuances. And I hope you take me up on that. Till next month, take care. Thanks for